everybody, it's Derek, AKA Mr. Shred with Masters of Shred, your number one source for all your daily Shredtacular content. We now have partnered up with Walt Grace Vintage, the premier gallery and boutique for cars and classic guitars in Wynwood in Miami, Florida to bring you a very, very special guest. He is none other than the tragically hip funk metal shred extraordinaire that stops the world when he turns into a, when he walks into a room. When he turns into a room. Give it up for the one and only Nuno Betancourt. Wow. I don't even know if I can live up to that. <laughs> I thought with the tree and all, like you were gonna introduce Santa Claus for me. You know, it, was not, it, was, it was that time of year, but give it a shot. But, but we're actually here now for Generation X in Hollywood, Florida. And you guys are about to hit the stage with Vi, Malmsteen, Tosin, all those great guys. And um, I think you actually have some history in Fort Lauderdale. Right? A I little do. bit of history there? Oh, you mean like strip clubs and stuff like that? <laughs> yeah, that can count too, yeah. Now that I remember there was some really good strip clubs here back in the day. We recorded here, right? That's right. Uh, right? A place called New River, I believe. New yeah. River Studios, that's yeah, right. we did three sides there. Three sides of every story. I think MTV did a special on that, right? They showed you guys backstage with pinball machines and all sorts of good stuff. No, I can't remember if they did a special. A while ago, but uh, uh, I remember the pinball machine. I remember the, uh, I think they were called New River Rats. They used to hang outside the studio. And they had a club there called Squeeze. I think that was the back where Marilyn Manson used to play. Wow. Before he got signed. Mm -hmm. But is it that, was. Is that where Pure Platinum was? Uh, that, was that was down the street. That, that was, was down, down the street. street, yes. I remember Pure Platinum ended up in our studio many, many a time. No the kidding. Whole, the whole club. Yeah, that's pretty really crazy. That's how we recorded those great songs. That, that was a great album, by the way. And also, you know, Skid Row did um, Slave of the Grind there yeah. and Danger Danger. Did monkey business there as well, so I did not know that. it's closed now. Though I think you can record some tracks there, but um, and now I want to address the elephant in the room, which is not on you right now. But what I meant by elephant was this shredlicious lucite washburn and four that you have over there. <gasps> here we go. Yeah. So, how did that come about, man? I have no idea. It's it gotta was, be heavy, though, it was right? Sent to me, uh, it was sent to me a few weeks ago. It's we, we weren't, it's a prototype, we weren't even sure. It was for me to check out and see if we were even gonna consider putting it out or releasing it. And uh, the day I got it, man, I actually, I really dug it. So we started using it in the show and uh, I guess they gotta put it out now. That's a, good, that's a great guitar. And if you guys are not familiar with the Washburns, I mean, yes, the USA models are a little costly if you don't have that kind of cash, but you have other models available like the N24, which- um, Yeah, or the N2. Well, the, there's the N2 and there's the N24, which has the Stevens cutaway on it. There's an N2 with a Stevens cutaway? Yeah, N24, and you can get them for like $6.99 on Reverb. I did not know that. And it's also stained matte, too. You can buy one tomorrow. It plays amazing, by That's the way. Cool. I played it, it's incredible. And you have a signature acoustic washburn. I do. You, you definitely do. I do, I have a signature acoustic washburn. EA20S. I'm, yes. I'm gonna tell you all about it now, all right? About this instrument. No, I do, I do, I do. Yeah, it has your logos on everything like that. Yes, yes, yes. It's that, that's the guitar that I use on more than words, the original one. Yeah. Yes, and then the uh, new one has that nice neck on it. It's slim, it's thin. That's why I bought it. Yeah. I want something you can shred on, and this thing is perfect for you that. You bought it? I bought it, dude. Yeah. I was looking for an acoustic. I could have got you one for free, man. How do I know? I should have met you five years ago. What's going on, man? You guys stay in touch. Changing that fax number on me. Okay, let's get into something big. Everybody probably wants to talk about, you heard it on Blabbermouth. Extreme's got a new album coming out next year. Again? Hopefully. <laughs> it's been long enough. Almost eight, almost eight yeah, years. I think we've been threatening about a new album for almost 10, it was ten years, ten years yeah. now. So, but, uh, but I think this time it's for real. I mean, at the very least, I know that uh, we have tracks done. And uh, I think we, we, we had about 20, 25 songs to choose from and uh, that we're excited about. We gotta dwindle them down to 12, that should be fun. But uh, yeah, we're doing it, a lot of the stuff's done. It's, a, it's, it's a definitely an edgier, heavier record for us, which is fun, uh, but I'm excited, man. Yeah. Maybe you should have done a double album, maybe, keep all those tracks. Hey, I actually, there. it's funny that you said that, I wanna do a, uh, a quadruple album, the band of the go for it. There you go. Yeah. So I'm talking three about. sides, what else are you gonna do next? Yeah. Exactly, and I gotta say, for heavy songs, I, for me, when I think of heavy for you guys, I think of Cynical. How heavy that song is, it sounds so great to hear, and the, the riffs in it are amazing. So I'm excited. Yeah, this is heavy. Uh, heavy and Cynical. This is gonna be intense. I'm excited for this. Some of it. Some of it. And then you, I think you said something about March, maybe early April. We'll, we'll see how that goes. And I also know you have a pretty good relationship with Steven Tyler, Aerosmith. Mm. You guys just recorded a track, a Rolling Stones cover, Brown Sugar. That is correct. And that was for a um, 
CD for Fame Studios in yeah, Alabama? Yeah, Muscle Shoals. It was a Muscle Shoals tribute. If you haven't seen the documentary, uh, it's pretty incredible, Muscle Shoals, and what, what they did on there for decades. And everybody from Aretha Franklin to Wilson Pickett to the Stones, Dylan. So they basically got a bunch of artists to go down and re-record uh, some of their favorites that from down there. So uh, the second I called Steven up, he was like, yeah, let's do Ron Sugar. So it was cool. We went down there and did it. And pretty pretty, uh, pretty epic for us to be down there. It was pretty amazing. You also did some other stuff with him, too, for a little while. You did Kings of Chaos with Steven Tyler, right? I did do him. that. Yeah, I did that. And uh, then right after that, we, we shot over and did the Nobel Peace Prize concert, which was pretty incredible. Which is, yeah, exactly. And you have another thing coming up for um, Nelson Mandela? Yeah, we did that. We oh, you did that right? We performed July. that. We performed, uh, okay. yeah. That oh, it happened earlier this year. Yeah. I thought it was, okay, I thought it was next year for some reason. It's okay, you're forgiven. And not to go too far back on your guitars, but I don't think everybody's ever brought this up to you. I noticed the bodies on your guitars are a little bit smaller, right? You had to bring that up, didn't you? I like it. I dig it. Here's the thing, though. You got that, you had a Jackson in 87 that you used, and it looked like you carved that up, and it, the body looked very similar to that Washburn. Cause I don't yeah. Think, yeah. I'm not a big guy, you know, so I... It looks uh, good, though. I, uh, I, I always felt that the strat shapes were, I don't know, a little bit less kind of comfortable on me, so I just kind of shaved about an inch all the way around. Except when I got my first guitar, I, I did shave, I think, just the top of it, not all the way around. Uh, and then finally, yeah, somebody decided to put up my crazy, silly guitar. So I went from the Jackson, you had the 87 filming live to the Washburn line. You've been with them for decades now, which is... Yes. A pretty good thing. Yes. You don't see many cars. Well, I'll tell you. It'll be 30 years now. Right. We went to NAMM. We were at Winter NAMM. I saw your guitars. They had two of them, if I remember right. Yeah. Second day, they were both gone. Sold. People grabbed them immediately and bought them. God, man. At NAMM, with all those guitar players, they only sold two? Well, all they had up there was two. They should have had more, right? I'm in trouble. Yeah. They're going to pick up more guitars out there, man. Now, you don't, You actually do um, a spur of the moment gig you do where you go to Soundcheck Live, this nightly thing out there at uh, Lucky Strike in LA, and you have some monumental shredders that you play with. I put them all on the page, all those clips I found for probably over a year. Nice. With um, Richie Cotson, Tom Morello, Nancy Wilson earlier this year. Yeah, Steve I can. That's right. You got more of that planned up for next year? Some spur you know, of the moment, It's maybe? kind of, yeah, it's never, I only do it like a couple times a year, so every six months, so I'll go down and, uh, you know, Play in the garage, so to speak, with some friends. So, Surprise everybody, you know, right? Yeah, it's just it's just kind of a fun thing, and do a bunch of songs that I've never really performed live or wanted to, you know. So exactly, if you're there, you're cool, there. Cool spot to do it. Well, I tell you what, I was actually um, told that you had a chance to play Eddie Van Halen's rig. <laughs> Who told you? Do I have to give up his name? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did get a chance to play uh, Eddie's rig. And you were surprised, I heard. Yeah, it sounded like shit, man. So it didn't sound like Eddie Van Halen? No, no, no. Yeah, it sounded like me. <laughs> sounded like you? When Eddie was playing it, it sounded pretty incredible. And then, uh, you know, it's funny. I was, I had just met him, and uh, um, after getting, you know, being in shock and getting a kiss from Eddie, which was what I've always dreamed of when, when you met him, um, he actually asked me to play his rig, which I was thinking about, man, I wish I could, but he could disappear and I could just play his rig. And he did that. And... Uh, and then I, you know, I, I think I went into some solo and get the funk out and he, he stopped me and he told me when I was doing tapping, he said, uh, please stop doing that silly stuff. And I was like, why did he just say that why my tapping was silly? And it was because I was in an interview. I didn't, you know, you didn't think that Eddie read other people's interviews, but I think a guitar player, I, I said that every time I do any sort of tapping, I feel a bit silly because it's such an Eddie trait. Not that it was silly, but I feel silly doing it. So he must've read that. He read it. Called me out. Wow, he got called out by EVH. <laughs> I don't even know what I would think at that moment. Um, he probably just smashed his guitar and that's it. No, that's man, great that though, man. That's heaven. awesome. That was experience. Heaven. Yeah, that's, that's, you know? that's, that's, that's uh, bucket list shit. Man. That is, dude, because everybody tries to get his tone and they all think, you know, the whole setup. You played it's his setup. It's in the hands. It's in the fingers, man. man. In the hands. That explains a lot, dude. Explains a lot. And now, I ask everybody this question, so I'm going to ask you it too before we get to that. You are going to be on the Monsters of Rock cruise heading out from the Port of Miami in February, I believe, with Extreme. I am. And this isn't the first time you've done that cruise, is it? It is not. Um, it's cool, man. It's, you know, we, we call it a playcation. You know, you, you kind of go and you perform two or three times, and it's kind of fun. Uh, who wouldn't want to be stuck with fans for four days straight on a ship <laughs> and do a meet and greet for four days? Isn't that amazing? Right? It's amazing. Great no, weather, it, too. It is, actually, man. It's really cool. You, you kind of, you know, at first it's a little overwhelming everywhere you take two steps, and 
somebody stops you, you know, it's hard to eat and things like that. But after a while, everybody chills out and you hang at the bar and, you know, there's a little island they stop on. So it's, it's, it's pretty dope, man. It's pretty That's cool. pretty good. So, de so definitely keep your eye out for that. Something else you probably want to talk about here we do with everybody. What is the one guitar you wish you never sold? Wow. I had a, um, a 62 Strat that I wish I didn't sell. Wow. When, when the heck did you sell that? I sold that, I think I sold that like uh, early 2000s. Oh, wow. Two, 2001, okay. 2002. It's probably still worth I don't know what got into me. It was uh, psychologically not, not well. Okay. But uh, the only time I think, the only, that one, and then I remember I was outside Guitar Center one day, and I think, uh, I think John Frusciante was selling one of his guitars. He was in, he was uh, psychologically and well as I was, and uh, I think he was selling it out there on the street. So between me and him, I think we both sold some guitars we didn't want to sell. Oh, <laughs> gosh. But you gotta love John anyways. What was the last guitar you got? Whether it was given to you or you bought? Uh, that one. That one, the acrylic one, which yeah. you guys saw first here, which is great stuff. And oh, we asked everybody this, everyone has a different definition. I'm sure you might have a different definition as well. How would Nuno Betancourt define Shred? That's a good question. Uh, you know, that, you know, no offense to shred, the word shred, but it's always kind of like uh, th there's depending. I was you know, I was talking to Tosin about this man. He, he he would say his generation now, being his thirties, would say, man, he's a shredder. And he, in his generation, it means that he plays like shreds, like plays super fast and can like you know it's like kind of that bionic player. Where back in the day when we said it, it was more of a, a term of endearment that you were a great player. Like man, you could shred. Like meaning that you could do all of it. So I think I'll go with that that version of it. Where gotcha. it's like you just you kind of you reach a point where you hold your own as as a player. And yeah, you know, we used to say, man, he's a shredder, which didn't mean that he could play as fast as anybody. It just meant that he was an incredible guitar. Right. And that's kind of changed over the years for sure. Yeah. These kids, man, they all want to play fast, man. They sweeps and shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Well, you actually string skip, which I don't know if you get enough credit for, because your string skipping is great. Yeah. I it's, actually referred to you as a string skipping king. Wow. I started with school skipping. I skipped a lot of school, and then I, I figured that's a good concept. So I'll, See, you, I'll you can learn something in school, not yeah, by going. By not, See that? By not going. <laughs> no, I, you know, I didn't realize I did that a lot. I, you know, I, I, until somebody brought it up in some interview, you know, uh, probably when I first came out, they go, you know, you do a lot of string skipping, and I did not know what that meant, because when you were doing it, it was just ideas that you loved, and then it became a bit of a, a, a thing, a pattern that I did with all sorts of scales, and I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to string skip them. Right. I'll take it. Be good to be a king for something, man. That's right. <laughs> See, I made that word up, and now it works. It's finally <laughs> labeled. That's it. So, what are you listening to in your car right now? Wow. Um, you know, when I'm working on an album, like I'm doing with Extreme, I don't listen to a lot of stuff on purpose. I kind of shut down, because I don't like to be super influenced by... You know, you could be, you know, when you're writing stuff, it's over a long period of months and years sometimes. And then when you're ready to record and you're excited about what you're doing and you're kind of focused on what it is, you know, things can pull you away and change, uh, change your mind and influence right. you. So I try to kind of shut it down. So right now, I'm, you know, all we're doing is we're, we're sitting around with these guys and, and, uh, and these, in these meet and greets and uh, I kind of put a playlist together of stuff, it's crazy shit from UK, bands like UK to Jean-Luc Ponte to Halen and Tara Smith and it's kind of cool. Uh, I guess I found out that I have the exact same taste as Ingrid. Like, he's looking at me like we, we fell in love. Like, you know, the See music, that? You know, yeah, he's was, he was like, dude, you're playing everything I love. I'm like, at least we have one thing in common. There we go. <laughs> well, you guys are also playing on the tour, so that's, there's that's another thing. Too. <laughs> yeah, that's great, though. Okay. And um, I'm just going to end it up because you got to go. So I'm going to yeah. thank you for doing this, by the no way. Worries, man. Let me get some, some love here for the page. Everybody go follow the official Nuno Betancourt. Is that your Instagram, right? The official? Nuno, Nuno Betancourt official, official, I think, yeah. Backwards. Nuno I had, Betancourt I had to put the official. official in it because somebody stole my Nuno Betancourt one and was actually pretending to be me, so I said, oh, fuck it. That happens a lot. Also, want to thank Walt Grace Vintage. Follow them. Amazing. If you're in Wynwood, Miami, amazing cars, amazing guitars, awesome destination. Premier destination for South Florida. Follow us at, at Masters of Shred. Follow me at Mr. Underscore Shred Underscore. Am I following? I'm gonna have to start following. Oh, please do. I push you all the time. I didn't man. know that. That's how you like something, which is good. Yeah. It's a start. Right? I like stuff. I sell stuff that you enjoy. Yeah, I, got, I put an ad up today from '95. Believe it or not. You what? Put an ad up today from you from 1995. Really? With the N8. Wow. I might have to Double unfollow neck. you. I haven't even followed you. I never posted that. Don't worry. That's not even up there. Um, no. And of course, um, subscribe to our channel on YouTube if you guys want to see more of this. Thanks so much, guys.